Hey, it's Travel Jiggler and we are heading down into the Blade River Canyon to camp at the Blade River picnic site. How to get you? If you're coming from Johannesburg, then you've got to drive all the way almost up to Hoodspread and from Hoodspread there's a turn off and a couple of tar roads and then a dirt road that takes you into the Department of Forestry's area. You need a 4x4 to get here. The site is run by the Department of Forestry and it is located around about the beginning of the Blader River Canyon, right at the bottom on the Blader River. First important piece of information. According to the authorities or the Department of Forestry that runs the campsite, you must have a 4x4 to get here. And I wholly concur with that. The road down here you can probably do with a vehicle with high clearance. But getting back up would be a problem if you don't have a 4x4, especially if it's rained and the road is wet. I also recommend that you have a 4x4 because if you come here with a two-wheel drive, you're going to damage the road probably. I say 4x4 but an all-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive would work just as well. But I think you should not try and come here with a two-wheel drive and in particular, you need good clearance. You can probably get here with a good off-road trailer. You cannot get here with a caravan in my view and I think you should not try it. Second important piece of information. You cannot book a site. So there is a signboard with a cell phone number and all the rest of it, but it just doesn't work. So according to the guys at the Department of Forestry at the gate into the site, you have got to get there early and then get a site. Now at the time that we are here, we are the only people here. There's nobody else camping here. There's been one other set of people that have come here to spend the day with a set of picnic equipment and stuff to float on the river on and so on, but there's nobody else camping here while we are here. The forestry guys do say that when it gets nice and hot, this site does get full. So maybe just take that into account if you're planning to come here. But like I said, you cannot book a site or we physically could not find a way to book a site. You've got to come down here, take your chances, I suppose, and try and get a site. When you arrive here, you've got to first drive up to the forestry office. So the forestry office is just a couple of kilometers past the turn off to the campsite itself, about nine kilometers or so. So you've got to drive up there, book in, pay your camping fees and your reservation fees and all the rest of it, and then drive down to the campsite. So the first thing you'll notice when you get here is that it's not set up like a typical campsite. It's really set up as a set of picnic spots. So it's, it's not quite your general campsite set up. And for that reason, I think you will note, for example, that there isn't a lot of flat ground to put your tents on. So I would recommend that you use a rooftop tent. However, flat tent will work and we are using our ground tent here. So I said we're using our ground tent, but there is quite a bit of slope. I suppose we could have chosen another campsite or another site to set up, but we really like the site we're on now because it's approximately 20 meters from the river banks themselves. There's great shade on the site. We're in the canyon, there's lots of big trees, it's a really beautiful spot insofar as shade is concerned. There is quite a bit of wind that comes down the canyon, which I suppose is not unusual for a canyon or for a, a river setting like this here. But uh, the wind is not really a problem, we haven't found it to be intrusive. And it's actually quite cool because we're at very low altitude, so it's really quite hot in this part of the country. So it's actually quite nice to have that cool wind. What facilities are here? You will find a concrete table and benches at each one of the sites as well as a bry stand. And that bry stand is a built bry stand with a little lean-to roof over it. So that's quite nice. So if it does start raining, then you've got a little bit of shelter to keep your bry going and so on. There aren't any taps at the individual sites. However, there are taps at the facility, so you've got to walk to them. One of the sites has a boma and a fire pit as well. And so you can put quite a few people around that. That's actually quite a nice spot, I think, if you're coming here as a group and you want to sort of socialize around that Burma area. There is no electricity at all. There are no lights. And the water that's here, I don't think is potable. There's nothing to indicate that it's potable and it doesn't look potable. Although the facilities in general need attention, the bathrooms in particular need maintenance and care. I think this could be a significant factor for some campers, so please do take note of this. Personally, I would recommend that if you're going to come and camp down here, you should be the type of person that is able to come here or the type of people, type of group of people that are able to come down here and be self-sufficient. 
From what we can see, there is a donkey at the bathroom, so if you can light that up and get it going, then you can probably get some hot water. We haven't tried it, we don't have enough firewood for that, or we didn't bring enough firewood for that, and there is no firewood on the site. Having said that, the drive to get firewood or to get essentials or to get whatever you want is quite a drive because like I said it's a 4x4 four four type track getting in here and you're looking at driving about 25 kilometers before you come to the nearest place where you can buy stuff. Each site has a dustbin as well and that dustbin is baboon proof and having said that just note that there are a couple of baboons around the area and as you would expect of course we haven't had any significant trouble with them but they have come to the campsite a couple of times but we've chased them away and there hasn't been any issues where they've stolen food etc but i think just be aware of that as usual and take the necessary precautions stuff to do down here this is really a fantastic spot it really is beautiful it's right down on the blader river within the canyon itself so you can swim for example there's some really beautiful water to swim in over here there's a couple of pools there's some really nice rapids and rocks so you can go cliffing and go up the river or down the river there's some really nice hikes as well now the path or the the hiking paths there is one that goes down the river and i recommend that one i think it's really scenic really beautiful it does require in a couple of spots a little bit of physical activity so you've got to clamber over rocks and so on and there are a couple of ladders in a couple of places where you've got to climb over a big rock that's jutting into the water for example of course you can just go around that in the river if you are so inclined those ladders are not in great condition so i think Think you should just be really careful of that but it's a beautiful hike beautiful scenery it's a really fantastic place to come if you're an adventurous person that likes to be outdoors so if you're going to come down here i would recommend that for example you bring a couple of tubes with you i wish we had done that it's nice to chill out on the river and i think it'd be great to just float out there on the river we haven't seen any evidence of crocodiles uh, however this is the blader river so there is that possibility i certainly know that downstream where the blader river meets the olifants river there are some crocodiles down there we haven't seen any evidence of them here but that doesn't mean that they're not here so maybe just as a, a precaution and as a disclaimer um, if you are going to go in the river then you know be wary of that so there is a sign at the forestry office or at the entrance to the site rather that says swimming is allowed. Bird wise also a really beautiful spot, lots of bird life but just take note it's really lush, really green so it is quite difficult to spot the birds themselves. Something that's really been impressive here is that we've seen a large variety of butterflies so really beautiful insect life on the site. The nearest town is Hoodsprayt. But that is about an hour's drive, not so much because it's that far away, but because the road getting out of the canyon and back onto the tar road is going to take you a while to traverse. So what's not here? So to repeat, no electricity, no lighting, no potable water as far as we can see. But in addition to that, there's no shop over here. So you've really got to come here prepared with all the stuff that you need, or else you're going to have to drive a fair distance to go and get stuff. So where the gravel road starts just off the road between Hoodspread and Sabi, there is a fuel station and a set of shops and so on, so you can probably shop there as well. That's a bit closer than Hoodspread. So the picnic spots are a really good distance from each other. There is quite a bit of privacy. You don't feel that you would be intruding on another picnic spot or that other people would necessarily intrude on your spot. Of course, depending on the site that you choose, there are a couple of paths going down to the river and some of those go past the picnic spots. So who's this campsite for? Who would I recommend comes here? Firstly, I think you've got to be self-sufficient. Although there are basic ablutions, showers and toilets and so on, I think you've pretty much got to be able to bring all your stuff here and be able to survive out here without electricity and, and without potable water and that sort of thing. I think if you're the type of camper that likes peace and quiet and to be away from noise and people and all the rest of it, then this is the perfect campsite. It really is beautiful from that point of view and just having the sound of the river and the rapids on continuously through the night, it's a really wonderful spot in that respect. I think you've got to be the type of camper that is a no frills type of people. So to some extent you're roughing it, well to a large extent you're roughing it out here. Without the ablution blocks, there really isn't much else in terms of services that are provided. I think this is a great campsite for families. I think it's a great campsite if you're going to bring your kids down here as well because the river is just a fantastic place to get into, to walk up and down and to get in the water and so on. There's some great hikes here. So if you're into hiking, cliffing and climbing as well, then this would be a fantastic place to come. Dangers and hazards, we haven't seen much in the form of wildlife. 
as I mentioned before, I know that there are crocodiles further down the Bladder River, so maybe that's something to just think about. We haven't seen any evidence of crocodiles, and like I said, there is a sign that says swimming is allowed, and we have seen a couple of people, the only people that have come down here, and they're in the water on the river in tubes and so on. Please be aware of the baboons. As always, so keep your food stuff away, make sure your food stuff is stashed away in your car, whatever the case is, and nicely locked up. Note, like I said before, this is quite away from civilization and it's probably about, could be as much as an hour's drive to Hoodsbred, which is the nearest significant town, I would say. So in that respect, just be careful. Uh, if you do get injured or something down here, it's going to be quite a drive to get back up there. A couple of important tips. If you want to come camp here, you should probably arrive here quite early because like I said, there is no booking of campsites. So it's pretty much first come, first serve basis. So on the way here, we had a bit of car trouble and basically as we were driving along the dirt road to the forestry office, the 4x4 started cutting off. We didn't know what the issue was and we tried to drive as far as possible hoping to get either to the office itself or down to the campsite and then you know be able to sort of sit in a reasonable position and try and fix the problem or get some help or at least be around people where we could potentially get some assistance if we required it. Basically the vehicle cut out and we couldn't drive any further just where the road turns off to the campsite or goes up to the office and very fortunately for us the guys from the forestry office were coming up from the campsite just a couple of minutes after we came to a halt. Now it turns out that one of my fuel hoses had a leak in it so it had been chafed a bit and eventually it had worn through so we were having air sucked into the fuel system. I must say that we were really lucky to have the guys coming up from the campsite towards the office just about at that time and they helped us to put a temporary solution uh, to the issue so with a bit of rubber band they managed to tie over that hole so we could get our fuel system going again so it was really fantastic i think they did a really fantastic job of helping us and we really appreciate that so thanks to the guys thanks to everyone that helped and for getting us going again all right the moment of truth So we found everyone to be very helpful and extremely friendly and that was really fantastic. It was a really good way to start our camping trip or our camping experience down here in the Blade River Canyon. Note that there is no cell phone signal down here as well. So if you do get into trouble with your vehicle or whatever, it's going to be quite a hike to get up to the forestry office. We're talking about a couple of kilometers to where the main road is joined and then another nine kilometers to the office itself. So just be aware of that. I think for that reason, it's probably better if you come here as a couple of people in a couple of vehicles. So overall, what do I think of the site? Well, it is a really fantastic spot. It's a really beautiful area. It's really nice to be down here. The site does need a bit of care and maintenance and attention. There are a few things that need to be improved like the ablution facilities and so on. But like I say, it really depends on the type of camper you are and what you're looking for. But this is a really, really beautiful spot and I do recommend it if you're the right type of person to come down here. So I hope you found this informative. Smash the like button if you did. Also subscribe and until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.